It looks like the misery winger target for Arsenal that Fabricio told us about yesterday is finally here and we've now known him about everything that is really concerning what Arsenal is really planning to go in and really get in a misery winger in there for you as referred to us by Fabrizio Romano yesterday he really came out and told us that Arsenal are really looking in for a misery winger in there for you and is he the one are they the ones we're going to talk about in this video because reports are really linked close to two left wing you no know, one plays on the left side as an inverted winger and the other plays on the right side as an inverted winger in the face so let's wait and see whether is it all about gerard bowen is it about gapko in the for you and we have some latest news from fabricio romano and very many others around the world in there for you we are talking Balogan, um, which other story are we talking about? Talking about very many things in there for you. And smash the like button, comment, and share. If at all you're watching, if at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to the channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. We are also having Arthur Melo in the mix. So, guys, endeavor to go into this channel and really subscribe to us so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Straight up, let's get into the news we have for you today in here on to Rokan Media Football. Hey guys, I go by the names of Rokan David. Rokan Media Football is the channel in there for you and let's get the ball rolling immediately. Now, we are having team news and takes is so close on Arsenal. He's the one that really broke the news about William Saliba that Arsenal has given him a new contract and he has accepted it obviously. By the beginning of this week, the news came in that Obviously, the agent of Williams Saliba and Arsenal really discussing a new contract and everything is going on as planned in the way. So he's so much close to the Arsenal camp and is getting news from there. And he has told us that Arsenal have a meeting with West Ham winger Gerard Bowen's representatives next week. The misery winger target is not just a one-man list and Arsenal are exploring options. This won't be the first time Arsenal have met Bowen's camp. Obviously, obviously, Gerard Bowen is really so much exciting. He really played good games for West Ham last season. Either for you, if I told you really watch those games of football, he was really on fire. He scored very many goals in the Premier League and he really put West Ham to the level of which they accomplished their season on. Though he really was not able to really put them to the level of going to the UEFA Europa League final. Either. But Gerard Bowen was one of those players that was being talked about in the Premier League that really turned around everything in there for you. And he scored 12 goals and 10 assists, 22 goal involvements in the Premier League in 36 games. What a, what, what an output from Gerard Bowen, a side which goes by names of West Ham in there for you. And in the UEFA Europa League, he played 9 games, scored 3 goals and 1 assist in there for you. In total, he played 45 games, he scored 15 goals and 11 assists in there for you. That means he was involved in... 26 goals the entire season in the 45 games he played either for you. Almost every two games, he really had an assist or a goal. That is Gerard Bowen for you, doing it for West Ham. And it's not the very first time Arsenal really going in for him. It's like the second time and Arsenal are really having him on their list in there for you. Remember, Fabrice wrote us about the misery list targets of Arsenal wingers in there for you and Gerard Bowen is back in the mix and I really believe that he'll be a signing that is so good for Arsenal especially because Arsenal really looking for a player who is going to play as an inverted as an inverted winger onto the right side of the midfield and Gerard Bowen does it better what it what he put up a side which goes by him of um, West Ham I think Ateta and Ed who we are so much impressed. And they really like the player to come in and decide which goes by names of Arsenal either for you. And they've told us that his representatives, Arsenal said to meet his representatives next week. Obviously, Arsenal had Rafinha on top of the list and Rafinha really snapped them and went to a side which goes by names of Barcelona because that's where he wanted to go. Now, Arsenal really looking and exploiting to get in a player in the names of Gerard Bowen that is really good either for you. Obviously, if at all you're looking at proven players in the Premier League because they've run short of time, if I told they are to go for a signing outside the Premier League, I think it would have been it would have been around June. But if I told we hit the end of July and Arsenal is left with just two weeks to go in and really play their first game against Crystal Palace, there is no way you are going in all out for a striker, sorry, for an inverted winger outside the Premier League. I really believe that this Gerard Bowen story has lots of things to 
attached to it. It has a lot of truth and it makes lots of sense in there for Arsenal. And his signing ticks a lots of bo ticks lots of boxes for Arsenal and what they are missing. You get, I think it's that piece that is missing out in the jigsaw of Mikel Arteta, especially onto that right flank of the attack because the left side is okay if at all you are having a uh, race nelson you are having um uh gabriel gabriel, gabriel martinelli and uh, emily smith throw has reported in trading today and yesterday he trained very well for a side which goes better to arsenal because he has been away for some long time but now he has returned so it's like another boost up into the arsenal the arsenal the arsenal camp in the field as they face chelsea tonight but the other right side in there for you, the only, the only burning candle they're having is Bukayo Saka. Minus Bukayo Saka, that side Arsenal is dead. That's it. Arsenal is dead. Maybe they will try and play their Zichenko, but Zichenko is good. But I don't believe that you can rely your entire season on Bukayo Saka and Zichenko. That's it. You need to bring in a player who is Premier League proven and he has scored goals for fun in the names of Gerard Bowen in there for you. A player who had played 40, a player who played 45 games and got involved in how many goals? Close to 26 goals in there for you. That involvement is really so much attracting. And I know Mikel Ateta will go in for a player like him because I know what it means having an English player onto your side. Do you know what it means? you'll get a lot of support from England. So I think Mikel Ateta, last season, he signed two English players, Aaron Ramsdale and, um, and Ben White. I think they both turned to £80 million. Pounds. Now, when you look at Gerard Bowen, he's English, he's proven, and West Ham would want close to £60 million. Pounds. And guess what? Fabricio told us that Arsenal are willing to go in and spend the £60 million. Pounds. They are going to spend on Rafinha if at all they really find a player who is really of that right evaluation either for you. And by the way, to me, Gerard Bowen had a better season in the Premier League than Rafinha. And to me, I believe Gerard Bowen can do more at Arsenal than Rafinha. And he will fit the system of Arsenal like a glove, obviously. And him being English, he will like he will really like this move because when the World Cup is really coming to a near and you want to be part of the squad of Gary Southgate, when you're playing at a team like Arsenal, it adds more to what your chances of going to Qatar will be. So he really loved this move and it will be an improvement. And West Ham are willing to sell. They've brought in Skamanka and I know they can get in other players who can go ahead and play on that side. And at 60 million pounds, I don't believe West Ham will really get say no either for you because the player would want to move and I know his agents will really push for this move because this season, Arsenal might be wanting to sign Gerard Bowen. But next season, they might scout someone else. And I really believe that Bowen knows it and he has to go on and take this chance immediately without further ado. And I really believe that Arsenal are really interested in this guy. He might be the misery winger target that Fabrizio Romano told about us in the face. Much like button, comment and share, and your reactions to the Gerard Boric story are welcome to the comment section below. Now, El Piki from France via Get French News in English, in the for you, they have told us that Arsenal's following Balogan is on Remy's, is on Reims' shortlist as the league one side search for replacement after departure of Hugo Ektike for PSG in the for you. I think if I'm Balogan, I take this move, I go to France, I take, I, I copy a leaf from William Saliba and Gwenduzi. They left Arsenal, they went to Marseille, and right now Gwenduzi got himself a call up at the French national team and they sold him at 9.5 million pounds. Remember, the loan had an option to buy. Of Gwenduzi, but that of William Saliba, it never had an option to buy, and that's why William Saliba is back at Arsenal to really get enough playing time either for you and is looking for him either for you. So even for for even Balogan, I think they can offer him out to a long season loan either for you because I think I think Reigns is better than Middlesbrough where he was last season, and obviously playing the top tier league of France, 
obviously france is known for having good coaches and if i told the coach is good that side obviously will benefit a lot and michael ateta would like to really let him go to that side and you'll hear him scoring in goals and banging for, for and scoring in goals for fun because his physicality is not a question his shot is good he has a hot shot on him he's good at finishing and everything that he's doing is so much in line with what everyone would have called for and everyone would have wanted from a center forward so we believe that it's better for him to go that side because why should you go in the championship when there is a team that is playing in league one that really wants you obviously you are going you're going to get exposed to very many good players and you might be brought in and really make your season and this might be a breakthrough season for Barogan neither for you because he's still young is he 20 21 years of age he plays for the England he, he plays for the England under 21s in the for you and him really going to France and really dominating there will be a very good 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 move for him because there you can make your name and you can as well put Arsenal onto the tender hooks to bring you back and really get you where you belong or else Arsenal can sell you to a club that is going to get enough playing time because We've seen players that have really made it in life at the age of 2021 20, as they can really break through. Martial broke through at the age of 19. We look, I think it was at 18, 17. Ronaldo Cristiano, 18. Rooney, 18. Haaland, 18, 19. Mbappe, 18, 19 years in the for you. So I think this side of League One would be a very good destination for Balog and to go in there and really spend just a year on a loan. I think that's not bad. He'll improve better and Arsenal needs to go in and do the need for either for you. And it will be good for him because we rarely see English players play outside the English Premier League. So I think it's better to start exporting some young talent to that side. Reason being, most of the talents we've seen from France, the young talents, are so much good and they're coming to dominate the Premier League. Look at Boba Kamara, look at uh, Chiomini. Though not in the Premier League, but he's really good. Look at the likes of Paul Bilibili, Pogba from France. Mm, we have the player from France. William Saliba. Um, so I think we're having loads of players from France that are really dominating the Premier League. The Guimareses of this world, you, you're seeing them at Newcastle. I think Steve Bootman has also come in through. And very many others from France that have come out and blessed the Premier League in the foyer. And I really believe that it's a good move for this guy in the foyer. And I'm, I'm convinced we level of really letting him go. I think Arsenal will let him go that side because it's a better side to compete. Remember Hugo Ektike went to a side which goes by the names of PSG and they need a replacement for a lad who goes by the names of of um, Hugo Ektike and they're looking at Balogan. Obviously, I could sanction that move at all was Edu or Mikel Ateta. Arsenal are preparing a cash plus Lucas to lead a deal to present to Juventus for Arthur Melo. So, this Arthur Melo story, Fabricio came out and said no to it. That Arsenal were interested in January, but right now they are not interested. Now, when you look at Makato Webb, he's from Italy. He's saying that Arsenal is getting Lucas Torreira as a McWaite and adding some money to bring in Arthur Melo. So, obviously, we know that Arsenal is looking in for a central midfielder. And ask yourself, why aren't they bringing Tillemans? I think there is a reason as to why Arsenal is not really landing the Tillemans deal. Has Mikel Ateta said no to this transfer and we've not yet gotten that update? Because I'm asking myself, why should they go in for Arthur Melo and very many others like um, like uh, ben Benenka and very many others who play in the central midfield? Yet, there is a player whom they can get at 30 million pounds from Leicester City and whom they have already agreed personal terms with to bring. This is where everything really turns against my mind and say, all right, what's really going on? Rokani, can you please use your brain a little bit and ask yourself, do you think Arsenal is really so much interested in Tiedemans? And that is a question that really leaves me in an ocean of thoughts. Why should they go in for players like Arthur Melo when there is a Tiedemans that they've already agreed personal terms with? And he's a variable and has not has said no to renewing his contract with the side which goes by names of Leicester City. So I think as Fabricio said, there are question marks about this deal of Arthur Melo. There are question marks. Obviously, we know that Juventus is in need of Lucas Torreira and Arsenal can use it to get in Arthur Melo, but on what price? On what price? You get? That's how the story of Milankovic Savic came in through and it died out. That Arsenal had really even made an offer. And it died out like that. 
So he died a natural death, that story. So I think even this Athamelo story is so much in the news because Arsenal were interested in Athamelo in January and they wanted to take him on, on a long season loan, but Juventus wanted to give him out on two loans, on two on two year loan and an option to buy in there for you. But even Juventus have not yet taken this man onto the tour in America. So they've left him. So wait and see where Arthur Mero is going to go in there for you. Smash the like button, comment and share. And thank you for always keeping it, keeping it Rokani Media Football. Now, let's get into the story of Fabrizio Romano. I've always been told, I had talked about when the story was beginning, especially when we commenced this story. Fabrizio told us that with this winger, Arsenal are looking to sign. I think they will go for it if they really trust the winger, not just to sign another player. We know Rafinha was a top target for Arsenal. Rafinha was an obsession for Arsenal because he was super appreciated. But then they decided not to enter a bidding war with Barcelona in there for you. And he told us that on Arsenal's misery winger target, I would love to tell you, but at the moment, everything is under the ladder. I will try to find out to tell you in the coming days. Obviously, it shows you that Arsenal are really looking for a four, sorry, a right winger. Sorry, a winger who plays on the right side as an inverted winger with a left foot. They are willing to bring in that player. That's what I've been telling you that. That story of Gerard Bowen, I believe it. I believe it. I believe in it because Arsenal are looking for a player like Gerard Bowen. Having really looked around on all the targets they're having, the most realistic signing Arsenal should bring in that is Premier League proven and won't really take long to fit with the team of Arsenal is obviously Gerard Bowen. But... How much is West Ham calling for this signing in the for you? If at all, it's the misery winger target for Arsenal, as Fabrizio is really telling us that he'll tell us in the coming future, in the for you, in the coming days. But he really knows that they have really started to talk to agents of players in the for you. And I know by next week, this Gerard Boyne story is going to hit media a lot. A lot. Obviously, Gerard Boyne is a good player, but let's wait and see who is that misery target is. But... Talking about Gerard Bowen, there is another misery winger that Arsenal is being linked to. Is he the one? That's what I told you at the beginning of the story. That is it, Gerard Bowen or Cody Gapko in there for you? Gapko plays for PSV and Heaven in there for you. And Arsenal interest in Gapko is concrete. Club ready to make an offer for the player and have in, have intimated that to his representatives. That is ADNL. This is really coming in from Netherlands and it's a good source in there for you and you cannot really rate it down and really put and pour water out what they are saying in there for you but wait for my reaction to this and I'm really going to show you what this is all about. Then, read the game. He's a writer for football and neither for you and he previously worked at, at the website of Arsenal and GFFA and he has told us that Arsenal are one of the several Premier League clubs interested in PSG winger Cody Gapko. Football London understands Gapko is usually admired by Mikel Ateta and is one and is one name on the club's list of potential alternatives to Rafinha in there for you. So, I've seen this story of Gapko in there for you. But my worry is, Gapko is a good player. He scored very many goals last season. He's so much exciting off the left side. He's not good on the right side. Let me tell you this. Arsenal don't want a player who is playing on the left flank. No, they want a player who is going to play on the right wing and is proven onto that. Gapko is not that kind of player. That's why I really come out and pour water to the story of Cody Gapko, that Arsenal is interested in him, because he is not a player who plays on the right wing. Does Mikel Arteta see him as a player who plays that side? I doubt. I doubt. If Arsenal were into this player and they wanted him, they would have brought him earlier enough to train with them in the preseason such that they try him onto that right side and he gets used to playing that side. But two weeks into what we call the start of the Premier League against Crystal Palace, you can't go in for a player who is not Premier League proven. You get, especially in a place, in a position that you really believe that you need to be having that sense in there for you. People will tell me that, yes, but Arsenal went in for Thomas Partey at the deadline day. Thomas Partey is a different kind of player. He's proven. He was a proven player. Arsenal went in for Tomiyasu on the deadline day, yeah, because he's a defender. But in most of the games and in most of the signings that we've made and seen in the world, it's very rare for defenders to flop. You get? And guess, can I ask you something? 
What have you known Italy for in the previous years? Italy has been known for really training defenders. And I think Tomiyasu coming in at Arsenal was so much scouted and he came in and fit like a glove in the team of Arsenal and defended very well. Though his game going forward is still suspect, but at least he's really good. Especially into that defensive cover he puts onto that right side of the the back, the, the what? The full back. So, I don't believe that Cody Gapko is coming to Arsenal and Arsenal interested in him. But I really believe in that story of Gerard Bowen because Gerard Bowen ticks all the boxes of a player that Mikel Arteta is wanting. That's what I really believe that Gerard Gapko is not really a player that Arsenal are really interested in. When you look at his stats, they're so amazing. They're so amazing. He really played 27 games in the league and scored 12 goals. You get? And 13 assists. Now, let me tell you. The Premier League is like five steps above of the Eredivisie. You get? And how would Mikel Ateta go for a player who scored the same goals with Gerard, with Gerard Bowen who plays in the Premier League? Ask yourself. Obviously, when you're adding dots, it obviously shows you that it's Gerard Bowen <laughs> that Mikel Arteta would have won to take at Arsenal, not Gapko, because Gapko played 27 games and scored 12 goals with 13 assists, you get, in the LDVZ. Then Gerard Bowen played 36 games, scored 12 goals with 8 assists. If I told you a manager, who do you go for? Obviously, you go in for Gerard Bowen because he's really proven. And that's why I've come out and poured water to the story of Gapko to Arsenal either for you. I know he has been the news since January that Arsenal have been looking for him to come in and play that role. But trust me, the left side of Arsenal is full. They're having Gabriel Martinelli. They're having, they're having Emily smith Rowe, And the manager has hinted on retaining Grace Nelson. So, where is he going to play? Where is he going to play? If they're looking for a player like Anthony, who is playing as an inverted, inverted winger onto the right flank, Obviously, I would say there is some, some, some truth in that. But Cody Gapko, no way, no way to Arsenal. I really believe that Mikel Arteta is really looking elsewhere in there for you. And Gerard Bowen might be one of those players that Arsenal is looking into go and get and really make their team stronger. Premier League proven. He won't need to really know a lot about the Premier League. He knows everything concerning the opponents in the Premier League. And the manager can easily trust him because they've run short of time. They've run short of time. If there is a left-footed player who plays on the wing in the Premier League that Arsenal can go in and really gate in and he's really proven, Gerard Bowen is the guy. Gerard Bowen is the guy. And I think Kosi Arsenal podcast, my mate, is really going to be so much excited about this story because he wants this guy. He likes him die. That's it. That's I can frame it in there for you. But Gerard Bowen to Arsenal is a story that you should expect in the news next week in there for you. And that's what I had for you. Talked about Gerard Bowen to Arsenal. Arsenal is meeting the representatives of Gerard Bowen next week. Then we've talked about Cody Gapko. To me, I've rubbished that story. Unless otherwise, I see a credible journalist like Fabrizio Romano, Dimazio, or David Austin tweet about it. Or really confirm it. That's when I will go in and really say, all right. It's true because he doesn't tick any boxes at Arsenal. He doesn't. I've not seen him play on the right side. He plays on the left side. He's right-footed. Mikel Arteta is looking for a left-footed winger who plays on the right flank as he was going in all for Rafinha. So he doesn't tick my boxes. I don't really, I don't really agree with what many people are really saying about this deal either for you. Then we've talked about Foreign Barogan being linked to Reims in France, a team that is wanting him on loan after they've lost Hugo Ektike to PSG in there for you. Torreira as a McWay to bring in Athamelo, a doubt onto that story because Arsenal has a cheaper option of Yuri Tidemans, whom they've already agreed personal terms with. And the player is still a viable, so why should they go in for a player who has flopped at Juventus for the last two, three years and they leave behind a player who is proven already in the Premier League in the terms of Yuri Tillemans? I really believe that that story is being moved around by the agent to make to make other teams know that there is a player available in the names of Arthur Melo who is really cheap and Juventus is really willing to offload that player because Allegri doesn't believe in him. He brought in Paul Pogba and very many other players. And that's why he's going in for Torreira as Juventus. But Arsenal, I think, 
are not linked to Arthur Melo as Fabricio Romano came out and really told us. So guys, thank you for watching in. Go into the comment section and tell me what you think about the stories we've talked about and tell me exactly who do you think Arsenal is signing next and tell me of Cody Gapko and Bowen, what deal is more realistic? What deal ticks all the boxes for side which goes by names of Arsenal in here onto our channel which goes by names of Rokani Media Foot. By the way, smash the like button guys. Smash it like never before. 200 likes on this video is what I'm calling in to say that you guys are really giving us the best of what we deserve. Rokan David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. Much build up. From like three hours from now, it's coming through. We are going to be live and we are going to bring you what we think about that game of Arsenal and Chelsea as we dissect the battles that are going to be into that game after we get the confirmed starting 11 of these teams in there for you. I sign out for now, guys. Good night, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening.